Good day, everyone. Today, let's talk what are the different types of hypotheses, how to formulate, and how to write hypotheses in your research paper. Hypothesis is a tentative explanation about your problem. It's a tentative because you are not yet sure of your answer to your problem. That's why it's a tentative explanation. So you are just guessing. That's why it is also a prediction of the relationship of your variables. So it does not happen yet. You do not know yet whether your answer to your problem is correct or wrong. And this will be proven when you do your experiment or you do the experimentation. You may encounter hypotheses and hypotheses. Are these two words the same? Which is the appropriate word that you will use in your study? Hypothesis is singular, while hypothesis, E, is plural. So when you have only one hypothesis, use the word hypothesis I. But if you have two or more hypotheses in your study, use the word hypothesis E. What are the characteristics of a good hypothesis? A good hypothesis answers your research problem. It shows the relationship of the DV or the dependent variable and the IV or the independent variable. It can be tested and falsifiable, which means that your hypothesis can be proven true or false. So you can negate or affirm your hypothesis. Let's have an example. The title is The Effect of Soil on the Growth of Roses. Now that you have a research title, the next thing that you will do now is to identify or think your problem. Going back to our title well ago, The Effect of Soil on the Growth of Roses, so we can formulate now our problem. Remember, our problem should be based on our research title or our research study. So we can formulate now our problem as, what is the effect of soil on the growth of roses? Once you have now your research problem, the next thing that you will do now is to formulate your hypothesis. So think again, what would be the tentative explanation to your problem? That will be your hypothesis. In formulating your experimental quantitative hypothesis, you follow the if-then format. If, change plan of independent variable, then the effect of this independent variable on your dependent variable. Going back to our problem, what is the effect of soil on the growth of roses? So we make now a prediction or we make now a tentative answer to this problem. This is called the hypothesis. So our hypothesis now will be, if roses are planted on different types of soil, then their growth will increase by different heights. Okay, let us analyze if this hypothesis is good. A hypothesis is good if it answers these four questions with yes. Question number one, does it follow the if-then statement? Our answer, yes. So it's very obvious. We have the if, then, highlighted with white ink. Question number two, does it answer your research problem? So if roses are planted on different types of soil, then their growth will increase by different heights. Yes. Question number three, does it show the relationship of the dependent variable and independent variable? So where is our independent variable here? We have the soil. How about our dependent variable, the growth? So does it show the relationship? Yes, because if roses are planted on different types of soil, then their growth will increase by different height. And question number four, can it be tested and falsifiable? The answer again is yes, because we can measure the growth, the increase in height of the plant. And using a statistical method, we can negate or affirm our hypothesis. So it is tested and falsifiable. So since our answer to the four questions is yes, this hypothesis is good. 
Now that you know how to formulate hypotheses, let us study this time what are the different types of hypotheses. The first type of hypothesis is simple hypothesis. So simple hypothesis predicts the relationship between a single dependent variable and a single independent variable. Example of simple hypothesis. Increasing the amount of light of to plants will lead to higher crop yields. So where is our dependent variable here? We have crop yield. So there is only one, hence it's a single dependent variable. Where is also our independent variable? It's the amount of light. There is only one, hence it is also single independent variable. So this is an example of simple hypothesis. Second type of hypothesis is complex hypothesis. It predicts the relationship between two or more dependent and independent variables. Example, increasing the amount of light and fertilizer to plants will lead to higher crop yields. How many independent variables do we have here? We have two, amount of light and fertilizer. How many dependent variables do we have? There's only one, which is crop yield. So we have two independent variables and one dependent variable. Hence, this hypothesis is complex hypothesis. The third type of hypothesis is directional hypothesis. It is derived from theory and it specifies the expected direction to be followed to determine the relationship between variables. For example, enough amount of light to plants positively affect the amount of crop yields. The word positively shows direction that the amount of light to plants will increase the amount of crop yields. Hence, this is an example of directional hypothesis. The fourth type of hypothesis is non-directional hypothesis. So it does not derive from a theory and it does not specify the expected direction to be followed to determine the relationship between variables. For example, enough amount of sunlight to plants is associated with the amount of crop yields. The word associated makes it non-directional because it does not identify whether the amount of crop yields will increase or decrease. Hence, this is an example of non-directional hypothesis. The fifth type of hypothesis is known as associative and causal hypothesis. It shows interdependency between variables. It proposes an effect on the dependent variable due to manipulation of the independent variable. For example, if the amount of light increases, then the amount of crop yields increases. Amount of light is the cause and crop yield is the effect. So it proposes an effect on the dependent variable due to manipulation of the independent variable. That, if the amount of light increases, then the amount of crop yields also increases. The sixth type of hypothesis is null hypothesis. So it shows a negative statement that there is no relationship between the variables, and we use the symbol HO. For example, there is no significant relationship between light and crop yields. No significant relationship is a negative statement. Light is our independent variable and crop yields is our dependent variable. So it shows a negative statement that there is no relationship between the independent and the dependent variables. Hence, this hypothesis is null hypothesis. The seventh type of hypothesis is known as alternative hypothesis. So it shows a positive statement that there is a relationship between the variables. So it is actually the opposite of the null hypothesis. And we use the symbol H1. For example, there is a significant relationship between light and crop yields. Significant relationship is a positive statement that there is a relationship between light and crop yields. Hence, this is an example of alternative hypothesis. Now that you know the different types of hypothesis, how to formulate a hypothesis, 
you are now ready to write your hypothesis in your research paper. This is an example on how hypothesis of this study is written in a research paper. First is you have to write the subtitle, hypothesis of the study. Make a space and then indention. Then make an introductory statement like the hypothesis of this study are as follows. I use the word are, not where, because this is an example of a research proposal. But if you are done already with your research study, so you may use now the word where as follows. So space again, then null hypothesis one, there is no significant relationship between light and crop yields. Null hypothesis two, there is no significant relationship between water and crop yields. Null hypothesis three, there's no significant difference in crop yields between plants exposed in low and high light. I use null hypothesis as examples here simply because that null hypothesis is the most frequently used hypothesis in theses and dissertations. But if you are doing an experimental research, just follow the associative and causal hypothesis. Then just write number one, two, and three, depending on how many number of hypothesis do you have. Before we proceed to the activity, don't forget to hit the like button on your screen if you love and understand this video. Directions. Draw a happy face if the following statements are good. Hypothesis and sad face if not. Number one, reviewing at least one hour before the exam positively affects test scores. Is this good or bad hypothesis? Answer. It's a good hypothesis. Why? Because it shows the relationship between the independent variable, which is reviewing at least one hour, and this is a time, and the dependent variable, which is the test scores. With the word positively, so it denotes direction. It also shows the relationship. It also follows the if-then statement. So if you review at least one hour before the exam, then it positively affects your test scores. Take note that it does not necessarily mean that we have to write the word if then as long as the context, there is the if then statement, then it is now a good hypothesis. Number two, men's test scores are greater than women in the national achievement test in science. Is this a good or bad hypothesis? Answer, it's a bad hypothesis because it does not show the relationship between the independent and the dependent variables. So we have test scores as the dependent variable, but what is its relationship to the independent variable? So it is not shown. Hence, this is a bad hypothesis. Number three, vegetarians live longer. Is this good or bad hypothesis? Answer, it's a bad hypothesis because it does not show the relationship between the variables. Number four, there is a significant difference in test scores in science between male and female. Is this good or bad hypothesis? Answer, it's a good hypothesis. And this is an example of an alternative hypothesis. Number five, Longer time of playing online games increases obesity among children. Is this good or bad hypothesis? Answer, it's a good hypothesis because it shows the relationship between the independent variable, which is the time, and the dependent variable, which is obesity. And it also follows the if-then statement that if longer time of playing online game increases, obesity among children also increases. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification bell to watch more videos. For more information about this lesson, you may visit these references. Credits are also given to the following listed on the screen. Have a great day.